We are live. Hey, Susie. Hey, how are you doing? I am good. So we're just going to start by saying we had some real technical, I had technical issues. We got on a little bit early to prep and I sounded like a cartoon character, but like a, <laughs> like a oh my God, I don't even know what it it was like a giant, like a crazy, it was so crazy. <laughs> I literally wanted to pull out my phone and record it so I could play it for you because I couldn't stop laughing. It, it was, was a silly, it was funny. It was great. It was the funniest thing and I don't know what it was. So I actually um, restarted the, the roadcaster and it, it worked. So I don't know. My son was actually down here this morning and he likes to touch all the buttons and I, I don't know and i was trying to tweak some settings so clearly i messed something up but we're, we're here and we're all good all good now so we are going to talk about accountability yeah and you know for me um it's what i lacked for so long i it was like i didn't want to i didn't want to accept what i was doing Right. And it was just like, it, 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 it's your, it, this was your problem. This was your fault. And, and when it came to my relationship, I had zero accountability because in my mind, it was all her, right? right. Everything she did, I saw as a negative. And it's taken me like five years to kind of sit back and go, if I were if I were more accountable for myself, I would have forced things to happen that didn't happen. I would have said, "You need to help me do this," or "You need to help me do." And I didn't. I, I never wanted to cause tension. I, I wanted to be that um, the Walton kind of family, if you will, or, or leave it to Beaver. Like I just wanted this Hallmark kind of thing, and I thought the only way I could get it was to just not say anything. And pretend, pretend it didn't exist. Like I turned into Mary Poppins. Same right. thing. So I, I could it, totally relate to you. Totally. And it wasn't until I got my head into, into a place where I said, you know what? Everything that's happening to me is on me. If I want to change who I am, if I want to change my surroundings, I got to step up. Right. And, and for me, it was just easier to ignore it, like put my head in the sand and say, I'm not going to deal with it because I didn't, you know, one of the other things Go. we're going to talk about later is, is, well, not in this episode, but like dealing with disappointment, right? I didn't want to deal with it. So I just made it like go away. You go through the motions. Yeah. Keep the peace. That's, That's exactly it. Try to keep the peace, right? And yeah. and the the impact of trying to keep the peace is... Exhausting. Oh, jeez. Exa you lose yourself in it. You lose do. yourself, lose your identity. It's exhausting, draining. And to find your way out is like it's like digging out of a hole. And as I'm trying to crawl out of that hole, I'm just putting more dirt on myself because I'm right. going nowhere quick. So it was so much easier to stay in the bottom of the hole and just chill. Right. Make it make pretend like make believe there's no world outside of that hole. I don't know if that but, makes sense, but that's how I felt. Stop. But let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. as, as So at some point you put the ladder in the hole and mm -hmm. you started climbing out of the hole, right? Just like I did. Yeah. So tell me about, uh, tell me about the journey. Like what, like what was the step up? What was the first rung of the ladder like? Well, uh, quite honestly, if looking back, I knew from the beginning that I was in trouble. I knew this person wasn't who he proclaimed to be. I knew I was making a huge mistake. I was warned by his family, by my family. Um, but I was young. I had my home, my kids. I was like, shoot. And then he moved in. And then I was like, All right, I got to make this work. I'm going to fix him. You know, Miss People Pleaser. I'm going to fix right. him. I'm the one. It's not going to be the same. Whatever they're saying about the old relationships. I'm, nope, nope, nope. It's going to be perfect this time. And I busted my butt trying to make it perfect. And I lost myself in the meantime. Um, so when I finally, finally started digging myself out, you got to understand I was 20, it was 25 years later. And it wasn't until that I was badly abused and I was isolated. My kids grew up, my kids moved out and it was just me and him. And I was like, uh-oh, uh -oh. who, who am I? What am right. I? What the heck am I doing? 
Um, I just laid in bed, did nothing. I used to ride horses. I used to ride my bike. I used to go painting, you know, whatever, to the art studio with friends. Not that I'm an artist or anything, but I used to enjoy my life. I used to have a life. I ended up a shell of the human being that I was. And un it wasn't until the abuse got so bad after two back surgeries, shattering my kneecap, be losing my gallbladder. I mean, my health was down. My mind was gone. I was a hot mess, to be yep. honest with you, that I finally, actually, it was my family. My family stepped in and they were like, that's it. And my godmother came, picked me up, literally dragged me out of the RV. I think I told you I was living in an RV yep. full of mold and mice and um, took me back to New York. And I, I, I was almost, oh my gosh, at this point, it's like almost 30 pounds lighter. I couldn't eat, couldn't function, couldn't sleep. I never slept, couldn't sleep. Um, I, they didn't think I was going to make it, to be quite honest with you. And every time I would have one of these breakdowns, as I call it, or self self sabotage moments where I would try to self medicate, just shut down. I would lay on the couch shaking. I couldn't even be around my grandchildren because they couldn't. We couldn't allow them to see. I didn't want them to see me like right. this, and of course their parents didn't. Um, that I finally said, I need to make a change. Either I mean I can't. I can't. What are we going to die? Right. Like I let yeah. myself die. I can't do this to my kids, my family, my grandchildren. They all know the truth now. Once everyone knew the truth of what I had gone through, it became easier for me to start saying, okay, okay. like it's going to be okay. And the first step was starting to talk about what really happened to me. No more secrets. Yep. Let's get real. So was, was, is that kind of like a healing thing to, to talk about it? Yes, because when I was a child, I was abused. So I kind of was groomed since since I was very, very young um, to keep the secrets. And then you didn't tell anyone, right? right? Back in the day, we didn't talk about these things. So my kids were growing up and, and my life, I made it look perfect on the outside. So I kept all the secrets, kept it quiet, would fix everything, you know, get beat up or be belittled and abused or verbally. It didn't even have to be beaten up. It was just verbal, uh, physical, mental, emotional, isolation. And then I would just pretend it never happened. Yep. So I lost myself and, and my life was gone. I used to go to the gym. Um, oh, my God. I used to do everything. I used to enjoy myself. But now you're starting to again. Again. Since yeah, June. right. And yeah, yeah, even yeah. even in this short time that we've known each other, it's just like every time I see you, it's like a different Susie. I, it, it's so great. The smile gets bigger and bigger so and, the, cool. and the eyes are wider and wider every time. So it, it's it's a it's a great thing to see. Well, you you all have helped me so much because I know everyone can relate to a little bit or piece of my story with what everyone else in our in our crew has been through. Um, maybe not to the extent as mine, thank goodness, but everyone is so supportive. And, and that's like, number one is like knowing you're not alone, right. Opening yep. up, telling the truth and then having support and someone that cares, like you all genuinely care. I care about all of you. And now we're at the point where, okay, Susie, you're up, you're standing on your own. It's like the little toddler. Now, now, what are you going to do with it? Right. Because now there's no more excuses. That's right, right? And that's that's where the accountability comes in now, yes. right? Because now it's everything you want to do and everything you're capable of doing. Now there's no excuses. Now no. it's keep climbing that ladder until you keep going to that next level. So, you know, you and I have been talking about this. And so I wanted to talk about, like, some of the different techniques that, that I've used and that maybe together we can collaborate on and I want to start with goals, right? Cause so I'm curious from your perspective, I, I have made goal setting like, you know, when, when you, when you're working, you have goals, right? Every, you know, you mm -hmm. have to meet certain criteria and, and from a work perspective, you have to get certain things done, but in your personal life, those same goals 
are, are really important, right? Smart goals are, you have to have that end point. You have to have a reason to do something, right? And and that's where goals come in. So, you know, just a simple one for me is going to the gym every day, mm-hmm. right? And it can be hard getting up in the morning and going to the gym, right? But it's such a simple concept. I'm just going to go to the gym and, you know, that's, this morning, the past yeah. two days have been like 28 Cold. degrees, right? And it's like, <laughs> yes. I don't want to go to the gym. But I also, from an accountability perspective, know if I don't go today, then I'm going to have a reason tomorrow not to go. And then on Sunday, I'm going to have a So that mindset, that shift of saying you have to be accountable for your actions, it, yeah. it, it sounds so simple, but going to the gym every day really kind of matters. Yeah, it, it really does. Um, See... My whole thing is what I'm struggling with is I have lived in survival mode for so long, right? Yep. And I lived for everyone else, not Susie. So, yeah, during the summer, I was all feeling good. I'd have good weeks. I'd go to the gym or go for a walk. It was beautiful out. Like you said, it's cold now. So I have to – I don't know how to switch my mindset to you don't have to survive anymore you can enjoy taking care of yourself or self-care loving yourself like that's a whole different mindset that's completely new to me right so it it's that you you brought you brought that keyword for me is mindset right i I think Mm -hmm. mindset is the foundation of everything you get your mindset into the right place it's amazing what you can accomplish and i'm just going to go back to the point of in two months your mindset is in such a different place. Yeah. I mean, look at the smile right now. I mean, you know, that that's that's no, so no. cool. So let me ask you, I know you had shown me over at maybe beginning of the week, you have calendar, you have like whiteboards. Yeah. Just that got you them. put up on your wall and you're like tasking yourself. That's a great step, right? I mean, that really helps. It's a big deal for me, okay? Because I my penmanship is horrific. I have, I was to the point when I was living in this abuse, disastrous atmosphere, I could, just to pay the bills was an effort, right? Just to right. get up and brush my teeth was an effort. So now that I'm in my little studio apartment, getting my life together, holding, trying to hold myself accountable and figure out a routine, um, I bought the two whiteboards that I showed you there. I think they're behind me. You could see them, right? Yep. Um, and I started writing even like my therapy appointment because that's every week. So I'm writing it down. Just even though I, I've never missed that appointment in the last two years, if I write it down and then cross it off, I feel like I accomplished something. I was so it's, just going to – yeah, yeah go ahead. I'm sorry. Keep going. No, I'm just saying it, it's literally that easy. I think we over – for me, I overthink everything and complicate it to the point where it becomes overwhelming and then I get, I do nothing. I'm unproductive. Yeah. I was, I was just going to lead into one of, you know, to-do lists are mm-hmm. so simple, right? People don't, oh, it's a to-do. When you write something down and you transfer that thought yes. from your mind into words that are, I mean, I use an application on my computer to, to do it. Mm-hmm. But when you do that virtual check and you've accomplished something, the simplest thing, so besides the gym, the other thing that I do every single day is I make my bed. Me like too. when I get up I'm, and, and people are like, it's a big deal. No, it is a big deal. Making your, that consistency, that intentionality is so important. And you've accomplished something. Whatever time you happen to get up, you made your bed, you finished something for the day. I mean, that that's a really important thing. And, you know, when, when you mentioned making your bed, because through it all, no matter how bad, how ugly my life was at the, at the moment, I always made my bed if I left. Was there, I mean, there was weeks I didn't leave my bed, so I didn't have yeah. to make it. But even my, my children, I always taught them you make your bed. I oh, It's almost like I, I play – It's I don't know if you want to say tricks with your mind, but I feel yeah. like if I make my bed – it's like I, I play these little games like, OK, I cannot leave the house in, unless I make my bed. My bed is always made always before made. I leave this house. Yeah. And once I fold, even if I don't make it fully, I'll fold the blanket on the end and put the pillows nicely. Right. I feel like, OK, I can't crawl back in that bed because I right. just made it. Exactly. So now either I need to do something or go out or even if it's just organize something in my closet. 
I'm not going to pull that blanket off after all that work. And it, and it helps me to keep motivated to start my day. Yeah. So it's, yeah. So I get it. It's not just about making the bed. It's about have you, not crawling uh, back in. <laughs> have you, or, or do you do anything, f- uh, again, just com- compare and contrast, I guess, or us, because we have a lot of similarities, not, not to your extent, certainly, but the other thing that I do every morning is a gratitude list. So I, I, I always, I say, and I write them down three things that I'm grateful for. And they could be really simple. Like I woke up like people, Mm -hmm. uh, again, I, I, I use the word people when I, when I talk to people and I say, man, it's a great day. And they're like 13,000 things are breaking around us. How can this be a great day? And I say, cause you're here to fix those 13,000 things that are broken. Right. And then it changes their perspective. I go, yeah, I guess. No, it, it, you saw the sunrise this morning. That's a, that's a cool yeah. thing. And it's the simple gratitude that I think helps kind of propel us. So I don't know if you do gratitude lists, but as we're talking about accountability and kind of the morning routine, for me, it's, Something it's a I big should deal. put on my list. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to write these down, these tips as you're giving them to me, because I, like I said, writing, I need to start. And when I start, do write, even though my penmanship is horrific, it doesn't matter. Right. Even like really awesome dreams I have. When I wake up and and something comes to me or you wake up out of a dream, it could be of a of a loved one, right, that passed away or something. And it was just like, oh, it just fills your heart. And and if you get up and use the bathroom or get a drink of water, it's you don't have the same feeling if you don't write it down immediately. Right. So I get it with the gratitude. And it's also, um, it's appreciating the simple things. Like when you've lived through so much trauma and stuff like I have, to see the sun coming through my window right now yeah. makes my heart happy. Yeah. You know, like everyone's like, how did you go on? How are you alive? How did you survive? How do we, How are you still smiling? Because I'm so grateful to just be here. Like, yep. That's an accomplishment in itself. So, th- so this is what I need is I need the next step. I need to like winter time is coming really quick up here in Connecticut and we know yes. it gets cold, right? So I, I would like to like my goals. I'm thinking, okay, what are my goals? Um, I started eating again, which is a big deal for me, right? Put some weight. I put my weight back on, which is a great thing. Um, I haven't been able to cook meals for myself in a couple of years, to be honest, because I used to have to cook all the time for, for yep. someone I wasn't happy with. So I want to start cooking. I want to start like, even if I do like a, a pot of like healthy soup or something, you know? Um, and I want to start, I think we mentioned this when we were talking before, even if it's just stretching, Yep. Just in the morning, even if I take five minutes now, I'm doing five minutes, just bending over, touching the floor, but you know, stretching arms, whatever. I feel like I'm moving my body. I may not be out at the gym yet. I didn't get that far, but it's a start, right? It's a start. It, 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 it it's it's the simple steps, right? It, it's the basics, and and every day it's something more. So it could be five minutes of stretching today and tomorrow it's you know five minutes of walking in place or it's yeah. you know just getting five pound bar dumbbells mm-hmm. and, and doing something but just adding to the routine the, the routine is so important i want to go back though because you had talked about your penmanship is terrible mm-hmm. people tell me i write like a doctor like it's literally unlegible what when i write like sometimes i even struggle with my own notes Mm -hmm. So I do everything on the computer and maybe it's the worst possible thing I can do is that I type everything on the computer, but it gives me a reference point. So I journal every single day and it gives me a reflection point because I can go back and say, what happened on Monday? Like, was Monday a bad day? Oh, here's what went well and here's what went wrong. And here's, so it, it, it's kind of, for me, it's kind of a uh, an accountability tool because in my journal, I write what I need to accomplish, mm-hmm. what worked, what didn't work. And then when I go back and say I was supposed to do A, B, and C, but I only did A and part of B, well, why? 
Right. Why didn't you get it done? And then I have to kind of sit back and kind of reflect and figure out why I didn't do what I said. And that's, that's all about accountability, right? Like Kyle you know and I what? watched a football game instead of doing, yeah. you know, paying the bills or whatever it was. Well, why didn't you pay the bills? Well, I was kind of watching the football game with Kyle. Well, you know what? You should have paid the bills first and then right. you can watch. Fo- so it's, it's that self accountability. that's also really important. So why do you think we do that? Because if it's something like you just said, pay the bills or check my emails or or just it's things that don't hurt. (laughs) It's things that thank goodness we have the, you know, like you have the the money to pay the bills or we it's we're not talking, you know, rocket science here. Why is it so difficult to do these little tasks when it feels so good after we get them done? That is what I don't understand. It's all procrastination. But why do we procrastinate? Why? Are we just programmed to just stuck? I don't part know. Part of it is part of procrastination is it's kind of a self-defense mechanism, right? Mm-hmm. So you don't want to do something because it has some kind of prior meaning, right? So if if you didn't have a lot of money, and so paying the bills was a stressful thing because sometimes you couldn't pay the bills. Right. Now when you when now when you're in a position where you can pay the bills, your mind goes back to man, you know what? It's so hard because there's there's kind of trauma associated to paying the bill, right? So I'd rather watch the football game because it's fun rather than something that brings some back some bad like memories. Like a trigger, like a it trigger. Is, it's an absolute yeah. trigger absolute trigger I I, I feel that I feel that I I get that that makes sense and the only way that I the only way you get past the trigger right is to reframe it to say just like I said those bad days are over thank god they're over and and now there's money in the bank to pay the bill so now it should be just a rogue thing and quite honestly for most of my bills I sell like auto payment so I don't even like I just remember remember, okay this today this is coming out and I have to worry about it but whether it's money or whether it's grocery shopping or whether it's a chore around the house, doing laundry, right? Some people just don't want to do laundry because it's, <laughs> I got it. it's another thing I'm dealing with. Yeah. Cause now I have to go to a laundromat. So I try to make it fun. Like I try to like making the bed, like good, it's good luck to make your bed and you can't get back in the bed. So now I have, I don't have a washer and dryer in my studio apartment. So I have laundry here. And I'm like, okay, I have enough clothes. It's like easier for me. I know this sounds ridiculous to run to Walmart and buy like underwear and <laughs> pillowcases <laughs> than to go and pick up the thing. And, and then I'm like, shoot, winter's coming. So I'm already telling myself the negative. It's going to get cold. You're going to have to go to that laundromat. But you know what? Once I'm at the laundromat, it's fun. You it I is, need right? the the funnest people at the laundromat and they're so nice there. And it's only 20 bucks to do a couple loads of laundry and I get to get lunch next door. So I I don't know. I still get stuck on it though, but I make it an adventure and I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of at a, a crossroads, you know, like I know the old way wasn't working. I want the new way. I know it's a better way to go, but, it, like you said, it triggers certain things will still trigger me and pull me back. So, so what do you suggest I do? Like, I don't know, make a list and get like within 30 days, I should be able to do A, B, C, and D without stressing or. Well, you want to, you want to, you want to prioritize things, right? What's okay. really the most important thing you want to accomplish, right? What, what of all those tasks are the things you really want to make so repetitive that you don't think about it anymore, right? So it could, even if it's going to the laundromat once a week, okay, I know on Wednesdays at 10 o'clock, I'm going to the laundromat. And it's like for me going to the gym, once you start getting into that habit of doing it, a lot of this is just framing your mind to say, yep, because it is that good feeling. And it is, oh my God, look at all the, I have clean laundry. I'm good for a week and now I don't have to worry about it anymore and and let's go. So Again, I think for you, Susie, as it is for me, writing things down and then checking them off and having that sense of accomplishment that we we got something done. It's my little reward. Yeah, my yeah. 
You know what? And I never thought of that. I never thought like as you're ta- speaking, I'm writing it down. Laundry mat, like like I said, make now that it's perfect, like crock pot weather, soup weather, stew right. weather. And I, I like to I'm trying to eat healthy so I can do that. So you're right. If I do like Sundays, if I make a big pot of something, right, just yep. do it my cooking day. Yeah, make, Saturday, make Sunday your cooking day. day. Yeah, yep. I'm, I'm okay. You know what? I'm going to start with three. Perfect. I'm going to do a laundry day, a cooking day, and what is my what could be my third? Oh, that's a lot. See, now I'm stressing myself out. <laughs> I think I think a third day would be. You know what I found really interesting, and I and I want to. I don't want to reveal too much, but. When we met to set up your computer and your mic, we were in an environment that you weren't really comfortable being in because you hadn't mm-hmm. been there before, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe that's step three. Maybe it's mm-hmm. going to some place that you weren't typically comfortable going to and just Ooh. experiencing what it's like. Oh, I like that one. Doing something new or doing something that I used to enjoy that I haven't in a while. Exactly. Getting oh, back into one. whatever that happens to be you talked about you know, you talked about um, painting. Yeah. You yeah, know what? Studio. Maybe getting back in, into a studio and trying that and see what that feels like. I got one. Horseback riding. There you go. I was gonna, that was the other one I was going to bring up. Absolutely. And I actually, because you know my granddaughters ride. Yep. And I actually got in touch with their instructor. And um, I said, look, I, I even if I do, because I, I don't have a lot of money right now, but I can do, even if I did one lesson a month right it gets me back on the horse exactly okay so my goals are going to be horseback riding every sunday i'm going to do a cooking day to just to make a bunch of food for the week like a food prep day yep will be food prep see i'm excited because now you're like giving me ideas and now i feel like okay you're going to check in with me to make sure i did this next week. i am and then laundry all right. I honestly, I can go two weeks without doing laundry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving my. All right, we'll do we'll do two weeks laundry because I, yeah. I'm simple with my clothes. Okay, so laundry will be every two weeks, and then what I'd like to do is every day, even if I start with. I don't want to overwhelm myself now because, like, even if I start with. 15 minutes sounds like too too little of a time, but 20 minutes of some kind of stretching or exercise. I, I wouldn't, Susie. I would do I would do 10 minutes this Even week. 10. And, okay. So let's and do 15 10. minutes the next week. And okay, so let's start 10 with some kind of some kind of bot movement. Yeah. Stretching, yoga. Okay. Okay. Because I think one of the things that we get into, I know certainly I do it, is I have these I set too high of an expectation. Yeah. And then when you can't meet that expectation, you stop doing it Shut because I, I can't do it. So if, if you set up those little okay. incremental steps and as you meet those incremental steps, then you start that momentum and then you start going. That's a whole All different right. thing. All right. I'm right. I'm serious. I'm writing it down. Okay. So I can't afford horseback riding every week. So I'm going to do, so once a month, I'm going to do a horseback riding lesson. And the, uh, and the other three weeks, once a month, I meant, right? Yep. Once a month, I'll do a lesson. And the other three weeks, I'll do something new. Even if it's simple, like we said, walking into a Starbucks, something I haven't done in a while, something new. It could be a library, right? Could be, it doesn't yeah. have to cost anything. And then Sunday is going to be my, my food prep day. Yep. Yeah, there that excites me because I feel really good because I have a lot of health issues that are like that I'm working on too, yep. trying to get healthier, feel better. My energy level is up. I've gained weight. So I really need to maintain that. That is like a priority. I don't want to go back. To, right. Cause I've been craving sugar again. And you know, this is terrible, but I'm going to totally admit to this right now. That I've been drinking this. It's bad. This is toxic crap. Like if my kids tr- like, uh, I have, a, I have to confess habit. something to you. When okay. when we were when we were setting up your computer and we went to get a beverage and you said that you do all the Red Bulls, yes. I happened to tell my kids that and they're like, yeah. "Oh my God, Dad, you need to, you need to tell them to stop." I'm it's like, "Bad." I'm it's like, bad. "One step at a time, guys." I think she knows it and I know it, and I know we'll it. get past it. But no, yeah. this is like this is like. Oh, I, I, 
every time I go to get, besides the fact that I'm wasting money, do you know what yep. this does to my insides? Do you know mm -hmm. how sick I feel? It's disgusting. Yeah. It's an addiction. I am literally addicted. Years ago, I was addicted to Diet Coke. And I used to literally, I got so bad that I would wake up in the middle of the night and drink it. Like, I know it sounds crazy. It's not drugs. It's not alcohol. It's not something like horrific, but I'm addicted. I'm totally addicted. It's so, so I that's going to be number go. four. That's right. going to be number four on the list is getting you off of that Red Bull. So I went to, um, you know, I have the girl Amanda, right? The young girl that helps me. Yep. Gosh, what she did today, right? She got my car registered. She got it like, I don't even know this, like, miracle. This kid changes the brakes. She's pregnant. She's done oh my, God. With my RV. Phenomenal. 24 years old. She's a little, little spitfire, this kid. She's something special. She's going to be definitely a guest on one of my shows. But she... Um, she wanted to go to the food store. So I took her there and instead I bought the one Red Bull. I did buy the one. I didn't buy the four pack. I tried, but I bought two big bottles, like the liter bottles of flavored seltzer. There you go. So I'm like, okay, if I could just like drink the seltzer because it has some kind of taste, it will fill that void and replace the Red Bull, hopefully. Because I, feel, I can feel it rotting like it's... As bad. crazy as it's going to sound, Susie, put the put the seltzer in the Red Bull can. Yeah? Try it? Try it. Seriously. All right, I'm going to try it. <laughs> Seriously, gonna, try it. You know, I'll do it. I'm going to do it when I get up to my... If I could... Like, if I had a little funnel thing I would do right now for you, I'm going to try it. I don't, even like, I don't even like looking at it. I feel guilty. Part of it is just... Part of it is just that built-in desire that you that, that can has a reaction you react to that can you react yeah. to the can more than you react to the content yeah i see it in the store i'm like gotta have it it's, gotta it's have bizarre it. Don't know why but i gotta have it do you know some mornings i'll wake up and if i know i have one in the fridge i'm like oh i got a red bull i'll drink that it's so embarrassing i'm sorry it's the truth though but here's the other here's the I don't other drink thing coffee i drank the coffee with you that day and that's better than a Red Bull. It is better than a Red Bull. But I, I think as your habits get more consistent, you're not going to need the Red Bull to get, because part of that is just getting you to do things. And as yeah. you start doing it more yourself, you're going to look at that Red Bull and go, I don't need you. Yeah. And it makes me sick. Yeah. There's nothing, there's, there's nothing valuable nothing in that can. No, nothing. Cooking. No. I, like I said, since I've been I've been able to eat again and gaining weight, I'm really looking forward to starting to cook again. Like yep, which is I great. used to cook all the time, so that is like a major major goal for me to be and able to I, cook I think again. It, it, I think it's a pretty easy goal too, because you don't have to create ex, you know these huge exotic meals. You can just start no. with the real basics, right? Well, the reason that I stopped was because the uh, relationship that I was in, it was like I was, you know, I'd, I'd cook breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, dessert. So I was like pro, I felt like Stepford wife. Right. And I, I think I, I resented it so much at the end that I didn't cook. F I don't cook for myself. So I need to take my control back and, right. and, and. Look, I'm not cooking for anyone but me. What but I enjoy to great. eat. Because you and you're making what you enjoy. That's the right. key. You're making what you enjoy. That's so important. Yeah. Yep. That's good stuff. Thank you. That's great. Yeah. We no, will definitely I feel do like... it again. Okay. So so when are you gonna check in with me? Well, how long <laughs> how long do I have to get off my addiction well, and um, know, get my laundry yeah, clean? Yeah, no, I, I think if we I think if we do a beginning of the week check, because okay. a lot of what you've got planned is for the weekend. So let's see how your weekend Oh, went. you mean I gotta start right now? <laughs> no, <Okay. nope. laughs> no, wait, wait, today is Friday. That's all right. right. So sad. All right, so I can do the stretching and stuff tomorrow. Sunday will be my day though. So Sunday, Sunday I'm gonna have day. to cook something. That's right. Okay. Maybe I'll do my laundry Monday. So why don't we check in in the middle of next week? You got it. Sound good? I'll have to have laundry good. done, food prep, cut down on my Red Bull. I'm going to fill that that can up with some with some flavored seltzer. Yep. And visit somewhere I haven't been. There you go. I love we it. Got, 
we got a plan. We got a plan. All right. Now you're holding me accountable. Yes, I am. And I, you know, I can't <laughs> lie. I get that stupid grin on my face if I, if I, I can't, I can't lie. Okay. All right. So I will check in with you. Awesome. Let me know. Give me a date and um, I'll, I'll send you an email. Maybe we'll, like we'll Wednesday or something, yep. right? Sounds okay. good. Okay. Sounds good. And I'll Great. see you later for the show. Thanks. Okay. And thank Thanks, you. Everybody. Oh my gosh. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> All right, Bye. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. We got it. All right. Bye-bye. Right. Thank Bye. you.